All right. Well, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, Heather, do you want to hit the recording for the Zoom? We got two of Heather. Oh, we do. <laughs> you were muted, Heather, by the way. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, that's odd. I was kicked out and now I'm back and double. <laughs> uh, let's, you're, you're. Recording in progress. There we go. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll call the meeting to order. I know we will have a few more folks that pop on, um, and uh, but we've got enough folks to do the meeting right now. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. Um, Heather, could you help us with the roll call? Uh, and we just have to remember to say uh, name and where you are located. Sure, Council Member Briggs. Here in Ann Arbor. Steven Borgsdorf. Uh, here in Ann Arbor. Jennifer Cornell. She will be late, but she okay. will be here, she said. Alan Haber. Here in Ann Arbor, briefly. Sarah Hammerschmidt. Here. Jeffrey Henney. Here in Ann Arbor. Rita Mitchell. Here in Ann Arbor. Alice Ralph. Frank Wilhelm. Here in Ann Arbor. And Adam Zimke. Here in Ann Arbor. Okay, great. Um, and um, could we have a motion to approve the agenda? It was posted on Legistar. I what is the agenda? Uh, sorry, Alan? What is the agenda? It is just to review uh, comments and approve comments to be sent to the Parks Department on the pros plan. That's it. So I move to to approve. Thank you. And second, second. by Councilor Briggs. Um, all right. Uh, all in favor of approving the agenda as written, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, next uh, approval, or no, next is public comment. Um, uh, Heather, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak? I don't see any hands up at the moment. Okay. Right. Uh, in that case, we're going to go right into discussion of the pros plan. Um, at our last meeting, we uh, we said that we would like to have feedback provided uh, in the, in about five or seven days after the meeting um, around the pros plan uh, and comments, uh, so that we could hold a special meeting if we uh, if we deem necessary and and work uh, offline uh, around um, creating some recommendations. Um, there were a couple of folks who um, had some recommendations they uh, wanted to be submitted. And uh, I worked, Rita spearheaded the effort uh, along with uh, Alice and I uh, to work uh, heavily on, um, on working on some of those uh, comments. Uh, Heather, could you send Alice the meeting link? Um, sure. Okay. She just emailed me. Thanks. And so uh, the result of that, I'm going to pull up today for, for uh, discussion. And so I have a copy of the pros plan as well. Um, and um, we tried to keep this um, both in a uh, formative and constructive light and also tried to be um, really as sort of brief in the areas as possible. There are a number of areas that, uh, that were highlighted. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. So um, this is a document here, um, and I will uh, I will put uh, this link. Well, I can't put it in the chat actually. Um, we will. Heather, could you email the? Uh, or in fact, I will do it. Uh, let me, let's do this here. We will uh, get you a copy of this. Hold on one second. Sorry, computer is enjoying the spinning wheel. 
right, there we go. Okay, all right. So, um, so uh, right here is the uh, the uh, document uh, that hi highlights a few uh, changes or several changes to the pros plan um, based on the recommendations uh, and the feedback that we that uh, we collected. Um, and we started, Rita, I don't know, we started working on this probably well over a week ago, probably 10 days ago now. Um, and um, it is pretty substantial. Um, and so, um, so I'll just go through and I'm gonna try and highlight areas of the pros plan where we, where we suggest these things. And Rita, um, please feel free to chime in um, as well. And I'll try to be brief here. So this first section is related to just the geographic boundaries area of the document, this is on page one, highlights the, uh, the area, uh, the central area, which is the central business district. That's uh, the, the section we're dealing with here. Um, and you know, uh, there's some prior pros plans that, uh, that um, were written and reference um, ratios uh, of population to acreage of uh, park space. And in several of the documents, pros plans uh, 2016 and 2020 are examples of this. Uh, there, there is a, a breakdown per uh, planning region or planning area, and that is not in this document. And um, it really does help indicate um, some of the uh, some of the differences between park space um, in different areas of the city. And so we thought that was an important recommendation. And we have that both of the comments here uh, are pertaining to that. And I think for, uh, for uh, to move things along, what I'll do is I'll just go, there's three pages. So I'll go through the first page and then stop and, and we can talk through any questions. Um, so uh, the next areas, section C and page uh, two. Um, um, and uh, this area deals with the social characteristics of planning areas. And uh, really the, the comment uh, is, uh, is similar to uh, the first, uh, first uh, section. It's just a continuation. This is a chart in this section. Um, so it's population density changes per planning area. So similar, similar concept, just a different area of the document. Um, Next section is on page 19, I'm gonna advance here. All right, uh, so page 19, uh, there is, <clears throat> uh, there's a section dealing with the um, advisory boards. And uh, we have a, a piece of this uh, there's a, uh, let's see here. Um, Kemp House Board Co Council of mm -hmm. Commons right here. Um, and uh, it was thought that it'd be a good idea just to include the boundaries uh, of the uh, center of the city block um, and enumerate those boundaries. And so we just put those, put those in here, Fifth Avenue, William Division and Liberty Streets, uh, including the parcels that are that are referenced. Um, so just sort of a clarity thing, um, especially since this is the first time that this area is introduced in the document, we thought that would make uh, sense um, to, to enumerate it here. We don't enumerate it um, elsewhere. Um, so um, section B on page 30, let me answer that. So this is uh, urban parks and plazas. This is a, there, there are several areas of this section that deal with types of um, parks that, uh, that the parks department manages. Um, and there, in this section, there are some descriptions um, around, uh, around uh, you know, parks in the urban areas or plazas. There's a fairly substantial amount of detail on the plaza portion here. And so we, we uh, uh, thought that some greater enumeration around um, the differences uh, of uh, types of space that 
fall into this classification. So basically a little more detail around uh, around the, uh, the types of spaces. There are a couple of examples in the, in the bottom section uh, of that, you know, including Liberty Plaza, Sculpture Park and Forsyth Park. And I think, um, I think our thought was, you know, just enumerating there are some differences here um, would, be, would be helpful. Um, uh, the next one, uh, and I'll stop after this one is on page 63. This document is uh, really expansive. Um, so kudos to all of the, the staff um, for putting this together because I have a whole new respect for this planning document. Um, in doing so. So uh, on page 63, uh, there is an alternative, there's a, this is a section that deals with acquiring property. There's actually several sections that deal with acquiring property here. Um, and there is, uh, this, uh, this one is subheaded as alternative methods. And we thought that um, the, the one method of not acquiring property or of acquiring property that is not listed here is the um, method by which uh, the center of the city um, block was created, which is the ballot uh, initiative method. And so uh, we thought it was important to uh, just provide a little clarity um, that uh, designation of land for park use via ballot proposal uh, is also one that has happened in the city. Um, and so I'll stop there for a second um, because the next section has got a few recommendations and just see, pause briefly and see if there's any questions around this first, first page of recommendations. Okay, hearing none, sounds good. Um, Hang on, I think I, I think I do. I just wanna make sure I understand the proposals. So sure. there's the, there's the table at the beginning of section A that in prior pros plans has columns for the different planning areas where you can see the, the population density and the uh, park acreage by those planning areas. And the proposal is to put that, I guess, put those additional columns back in the table. Um, yes. Yeah, that's, or, or at least the data that's in the columns. Um, okay. Okay, um, just fine with that. I just wanna make sure I understood that. And then the, the last point about land acquisition, I just wanna make sure that we're being precise because <clears throat> proposal A didn't acquire any land. It designated public land as park land. That's a good so point. So are these other methods more directed to the acquisition of land in the first place, or is it kind of an, you know, an oval peg for a round hole if it's, if it's designating already existing public land? I guess, no, I think about it, it's probably okay to include it because uh, it's taking land for whatever purpose and making it into land for a park. Correct. Um, but that's, that was sort of a, maybe, Give me a moment of pause there to think about that. Is it really is it really accurate to fit in a ballot proposal among these other methods? Um, so th there's a number of methods here. I've got them up on the screen that um, that um, deal with this. Um, and I I hear your point, Stephen. I uh, I think that's a fair question. Um, well, you know what, those easements and conservation easements, it, I guess it's similar because it's taking land that could be used for other purposes and saying, all right, there's a way to, to make it as a, a natural <clears throat> area or a park. So yeah. I, with, I withdraw my question, I guess. I think it makes sense to me to include that or suggest that that be included as another way to acquire parkland. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Alice, you got your hand up. Yes, um, I... I get Steve's point. Um, I think uh, there is one thing underlying the, the question of what, what is a way of acquiring property or way of designating property and so forth. Um, it's, it is public land. Um, it's not, it doesn't show on the zoning map as public land, as far as I know. Um, but um, the distinction throughout the document, I think often 
says uh, dedicated parkland or something else, you know, parkland gener generically. But we need to be clear about what the difference is between designating a, a public land for a park and uh, having it zoned public land or having it used as a park. This is really arcane differences, but when uh, I, I don't recall which section where they said a, dedic uh, a dedicated park rather than a designated park. We probably have already a dedicated park through the ballot ma measure, but we have not resolved the question as to whether to go through the process of designation. So I think the idea of maybe lumping it into uh, acquiring, but not necessarily designating or dedicating is probably a good idea. And, and I think Steve, now that Steve seems to be comfortable with it, I, I would agree that we need to add that um, language. Would you repeat the language that you were uh, proposing, uh, yeah. Adam? Yeah, so I think for this section, it would be under uh, section five, land use planning and acquisition. So I just changed the one word here um, uh, to clarify that it is around acquisition. Uh, subsection five for the alternative methods, which is right, um, right here. Um, and uh, just uh, recommending that, uh, that there's some language included that indicates acquisition of land for park use via ballot proposal. So basically just. But, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, Alan, a uh, question on this section. Yes, well, I have to uh, check out of this. I'm sorry. Basically, my my reaction to this is they've completely omitted any recognition of Proposal A that, this, uh, that these public lands are established as a commons that has a unique form of organization. They do not recognize any of the civic center functions they see this simply as in, in part of the park view, and there is more than that, how they fail to recognize that there is something new going on. It just feels like this is that what has been done is, is canceled out. So I sent out my particular uh, critiques that this should be in the master plan, that there has to be relation with community organizations in the development of what goes on that there are many functions that need to be seen as part of this development that operate over the next uh, time period, yeah, that there's a request for proposals that, inf that influences the next time period. All that is just canceled out of this, and I feel very uh, disappointed. Most of what they're doing is, is uh, very excellent. But uh, this, uh, in terms of what we are dealing with in the center of the city, is not so at all. So I hope you will take a look at the comments that I have made and incorporate them in some appropriate way. Uh, but I'm sorry, I have another commitment that I just have to uh, attend to over. So and with appreciation for what the effort is, I think that this requires a more critical view while appreciating the good work that is done in terms of what we are dealing with, it completely omits the questions that we are struggling with. I'm sorry, I gotta go. All right, Alan, you can always submit your comments uh, to Parks as well. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I submitted them as best I could to to our group. I hope you will read them. If, uh, I will uh, uh, elaborate them more as well. Thank you. Sorry to uh, miss out on the further discussion. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, um, Alice, uh, did you have anything else in this section, or can I just, go? On to well, just one quick general comment. This isn't a plan for the center of the city. This is a plan for the whole park system and open space uh, available availability. I just wanted to mention that. Fair. Sure. Um, and I did go just off camera so that my computer doesn't slow down here. By the way, um, okay. so. Uh, uh, so section four, open space parks development contributions within the urban core that starts on page 66. Um, and so we'll get to that uh, area here. Um, so that's this section right here. Um, there is a number of uh, pieces here.
that I thought were important to uh, highlight. Um, and uh, and so um, I, there are four recommendations, I think, um, that I thought were, were, uh, were important. So the first one is uh, dealing a lot with uh, the first paragraph. And, um, you know, I think that the the uh, where we arrived at by the feedback was that this first paragraph uh, had some statements in it that probably conflicted um, with uh, multiple views of density um, and how to to uh, have density, and so uh, there were some some almost like policy statements here, um, and so we thought that this. Uh, the, the recommendation here is that there's consideration to significantly reword this first paragraph uh, or omit it. Um, uh, and, um, and because it does really engage in a, a um, argument that pits downtown density with open space. Um, and so we thought that was, that was um, that there are lots of examples that indicate that there can be uh, both. Uh, when done well. And so uh, we hi highlighted a few of the communities we had looked at. Um, Detroit's probably a really great example of this because it is a major downtown uh, area and does have uh, open space uh, as well. So that was the, the first recommendation. Um, the second recommendation um, is around, there's a formula that's utilized uh, that we talked about on that, the start of the first page that really looks at the acreage per um, per park um, or acreage of parkland per area of the city and compares it to um, population density. And so this, uh, this second recommendation is a statement in the uh, pros plan that indicates that that formula should be altered specifically for the urban uh, central part of the city. And we thought that was probably not a good idea to alter it just for one area. And it could um, lead to disenfranchisement of uh, residents who live in the urban core, particularly since that's where a lot of the density um, it, that is uh, going into the city, at least currently, is going uh, to. And that could shift with some of the TC1 changes that are being considered by council and planning. And uh, and so, you know, I think regardless of, of uh, um, where in the city the density is going, the consideration for uh, parkland should be consistent. And so that's really what the second recommendation does is it says, please don't alter it um, based on the, based on the uh, area of the city that you're considering. Um, and, uh, and for the record, the pros plan doesn't alter it. It just indicates that it should be. Um, and so we're commenting that maybe that's not a good idea. Um, the third recommendation, uh, there's a, a section of this uh, section of the pros plan that deals with just some examples of uh, spots of open space within the central portion of the city and uh, the diag is highlighted. And there are some other ones too that are highlighted as well. Um, and so we just wanted to note that the center of the city space uh, should also be included in that list of examples. Um, and then the final recommendation in this area is um, there's a, a section that talks about um, the uh, uh, way that private developers and the city can form relationships to have um, parkland be created as part of developments or, or, um, or uh, you know, exchange or as part of development packages, if you will. And so, and that can apply to, to you know, plazas and streetscapes as well and, and a variety of things. And so, um, uh, there's there's uh, upkeep details on here and for when they've contributed and when the DDA is contributed too. And we thought some greater detail on when that had happened would be helpful, uh, when and where. And so just sort of providing the readers a little more feedback uh, on that one. Um, and I'll keep going, just finish out this page and then I'll, I'll open it up to questions here. Um, the next section is on the next page, 66. Um, and 67, this is this uh, area, credit for private open space and recreation areas. Uh, this section talks uh, a lot about uh, developers uh, creating open space as part of the agreements, but uh, it talks about um, open space for private use and public use and gets into a, a little bit of a, a detailed breakdown on that. And we thought that um, some uh, indications around where those had happened 
as well as which are private and which are public was probably something that would be good, at least on an example basis, uh, to, to indicate uh, where some of those things had happened. It doesn't really provide examples, it just illustrates the, the process. Um, and then uh, the next section is actually uh, over the course, I'll stop at this point because the next section is actually over the course of uh, several pages. It's the survey results um, that uh, of several survey questions that were asked. And so that's a section sort of in its own. Alice, you've got your hand up. Um, I'll see if there are any questions around up to this section five on page 66 to 67 before we go into the next area. You're muted, by the way, Alice. Okay. Um, uh, as you went down from the first four recommendations, um, the the it kept popping up along the way about the difference between private space, open space, and and uh, public. And uh, the diag is not technically public uh, space for Ann Arbor. And I know it may sound arcane. But it is it is a fact that the University of Michigan doesn't have to contribute anything to our park system, doesn't doesn't have any pressure to doesn't you know it's it's not really our public land. We can't zone it; they are a zone of their own. So I think using the diag as a, as an example of public space available to the residents is a little bit shaky. Um, and uh, when you went on to how there are private spaces. Um, this is a plan for public, public um, parks and open space. And I don't know how private um, spaces can be counted um, as uh, public land and, and added to the inventory counted in things like acres per population. Um, <laughs> If you want to go, my house, for instance, if I entertain people uh, from different places, that that's not public uh, open space. My yard is I have party on my driveway. That's not public space. But um, so I, but that's an exaggeration. It's just that diag doesn't count. Um, private tennis courts don't count, uh, and things like that. So I'm I'm not. Sh that's my opinion. Uh, but I think there is a there is a basis for it in that um, when you don't have public control over a space, it really doesn't belong to the public for use. That's fair. I, I will say it does not. Um, the The area around private, uh, there's, you know, section five here deals with um, uh, and acknowledges, uh, um, you know, sort of the way that the Parks Department um, counts or doesn't count the um the private areas and there are some yeah, nuances I the, here. yeah i do say that space that sentence down there about it yeah. may not be counted may not sounds like it could be but may not be um but should not would not or is not would i'd rather have something definitive okay um and then in terms of the diag just around that um you know it, it, there is uh the document does indicate, and I don't know the answer to this question, you know, as to if it, if the diag is, I mean, the, the diag is open for public use unless the university, I suppose, were to shut that down. Um, well, they can close their buildings, they can close their roads, they can close their driveways, you know, it's not under our control. Okay. Um, we can, let, Stephen, let's uh, let's uh, hear, hear your questions or, or comments, and then we'll see if we alter this area. So, um, I guess a couple of points. I gave my feedback uh, to park staff about the whole pros document. And one of the areas that I had the most questions about was this one. Um, I frankly think that this whole section, right? This section five is about land use planning and acquisition. And then this, this G is called parcels uh, donated through dedication for parkland within the city. And then almost all the stuff that it talks about in my view, could be moved to part A, which is talking about sort of the guiding principles. Um, and when you get to the urban core po point, it, I guess this, this whole section to me doesn't really fit within the topic, right? It's just kind of taking, hey, it's hard to get land in the middle of the city because it's expensive and blah, 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 um, which I don't 
as a reader, I wasn't like somehow advancing my understanding of parkland acquisition and everything else in the section G really seems to be going towards the, the criteria and the thinking around th that the city employs when trying to decide whether and how to acquire parkland. So my comments to the parks department already are sort of inclusive of everything you've said, but kind of more, maybe more dramatic. I think they could really overhaul this section, which leads to my second comment, which is that I have some modest um, expectation around how much change will ultimately happen at this point in the pros plan drafting, um, because I guess a couple of reasons. One is it's a document that is echoing prior documents and prior pros plans, and they have a certain formula and rhythm and it's difficult to take language that has been approved and change it, especially since it's been through planning council, planning commission, parks commission, and city council, the same language now multiple times. Um, and so even though we could improve it, the likelihood that that change is even intended for the improvement of the document may not ultimately be embraced. Um, and so I guess we'll see. Uh, where where all this ends up. I think there is, I guess to sum it up, I think there is room for improvement in that section. Um, and if they don't take my complete overhaul, then I'd be happy if they took these, these kind of comments as far as clarifying what's meant in that particular section. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, Alice, get your hand up again. Yeah, just a short comment. I think Steve and I are kind of on the same track. I, I'd almost, if you can't change language that has been approved over and over again, then maybe you can leave it out. I mean, it, there may be a different way, as Steve mentioned, to move it to a different section, which is less, less prescriptive or less uh, burdened with, con with uh, incongruity. Um, but that's, that's my feeling about it. If you can't change it, uh, because it's always been done that way, then maybe delete most of it, at, at least the things that are not particularly coherent with the purpose and the um, writing or the principles. Okay. Well, really fine. Um, are, are folks comfortable with, with uh, where we're at? without making any changes to this document uh, up to this point. Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll go to the next section. This is uh, section four, planning process for the pros plan. It's pages 77 through 89. And it's really, this is where uh, a lot of the survey results uh, come into play. Um, and there are there are several survey questions, um, and I didn't uh, we didn't get into the the uh, the first couple of questions because they're uh, uh, they don't you know they didn't we didn't have feedback on them they they don't touch on the center of the city but starting with question three um, three and four do include uh, pieces around downtown um, uh, parks um, including uh, the center of the city. And then question four is, uh, it's described as an expansion of question three, but it's actually um, it's actually a similar question without feedback. Um, and so uh, in, in, sec, in question three, uh, and then there are several other questions, by the way, um, the, the demographic questions start at question 12. And so qu through question 10 or 11, there's, um, there's uh, you know, policy, uh, considerations that are asked about. And so, um, uh, so question three uh, uh, deals with uh, uh, support of uh, park improvements using public tax dollars. And uh, so just in this first section, um, we suggested some wording to clarify um, that, uh, uh, that this first sentence support levels for 13 park improvements Based on tax, the use of t public tax dollars was was the um, was something that was an important consideration. Even though it's in the title, uh, starting off the paragraph was uh, was important. 
um, indicating that it is prioritization based on uh, taxpayer dollar uh, uh, desired use. Um, second uh, description uh, deals with um, question three as well. And there are, uh, there are uh, uh, a few, here's the data on question three. There were three options uh, for, uh, for uh, selection by participants in this survey. And uh, you, know, you could see not sure, unsupportive and supportive. Um, and uh, the reality unsure is actually causing some um, discrepancies uh, because if you were to split the unsure 50-50, um, you end up with a scenario where some of these priorities would be changed. And uh, the, this section does highlight um, in a summary, both high levels of support and uh, low levels of support. And then also highlights, it uh, doesn't highlight, but clearly if there's high and low, there's also a middle ground. And uh, so uh, the second recommendation deals with the fact that there is this unsure um, uh, element uh, that even if you split, it alters some of the statements in the first, uh, the first area. So that's, that's the first one. Eric, I see your hand up here. I'll, uh, if, if it's okay, I'll go through these, these four or five, four pieces and then um, get into your question here. Um, the, the second recommendation uh, deals with, or sorry, the third recommendation rather, um, deals with the high level summaries on questions three, five, six, seven, and eight. And there might be other ones, but those were certainly ones that, uh, that I noted um, that there are the uh, data between the questions created some inconsistency. So not so much within the question itself, um, uh, but, uh, but in some cases there were some, uh, some things that were inconsistent from question to question. And, uh, and that was sort of expanded actually in this fourth recommendation, which uh, deals with even potentially some um, conflicting uh, information. So for instance, there were several, um, several questions around the use in question uh, or several pieces of the survey question in question three that deal with the, the spending of taxpayer dollars on, um, you know, for instance, playground areas or um, uh, uh, let's see here, um, river recreation facilities. This is one that really caught my eye. There's a later question, question eight or nine or 10 or something like that, that's more open-ended that talks about things that people would like to see improved. And some of the pieces that rank low here are, are highlighted uh, in positive light in the other questions as, as uh, as having been feedback um, uh, from the community. And so this last recommendation is basically just that there is some um, sort of acknowledgement around the fact that there is some, um, that there is some, um, you know, conflicting feedback in, in the total series of survey questions. Um, and, uh, and, and just sort of acknowledging that, that, uh, that, is very real, frankly. Um, and it does affect top priorities, middle level priorities as well. And the questions are different, but there is overlapping um, uh, conflict. And so uh, I'll stop there. Uh, and Erica, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I, I think I would encourage not including that. I don't know if it's the second bullet point or the, the one around the splitting of unsure sure into the two categories that's just from my understanding of sort of survey analysis that's not how it, how a response like that might be interpreted um it's you know we don't know what respondents meant by unsure um they might mean a lot of different things it doesn't mean that you know half were supportive and half you know they were leaning towards supportive half were unsupportive um so i just think that's i mean it's it's important to note that there are perhaps high levels of, of folks, respondents that are unsure about something and um, on certain things. But I, I think this is kind of odd language around splitting the supportive and non-supportive. Would you, um, maybe maybe what we do is we note that there are varying levels of unsure um, 
Um, um, yeah, if that's not called out in the in the text, then that's probably an important element to to weigh in on. But you know, that's about it. I would I would suggest. Yeah, I just to comment. There there are disagreeing opinions, so somehow it's good to kind of acknowledge that people may, no matter how they rank things, they may disagree on one thing or another. Um. Something like that, maybe, might be more appropriate. Uh, Frank. Yes, uh, I've noticed uh, early on um, that on the question that specifically about the center of the city, if you were to remove the unsure responses uh, and you just had the for and against, they almost act, uh, identically mirror uh, the percentage results of, of the Prop A vote. And in a, in a vote where you go to the poll, you don't, you don't uh, uh, record people who are unsure. They just yeah. maybe don't vote. Um, so uh, I guess that's just an observation that uh, if you do that, and I'm not suggesting uh, necessarily we do, but it, it, it's interesting that it's very close to the percentage uh, of yes votes and no votes if you just take the yes and no and uh, eliminate the, uh, the unsure. <clears throat> we'll keep going here then. Um, so uh, moving on to the, uh, to the next uh, area, this is subsection D on page 95. Um, give me one second here. Okay, so this is the uh, Downtown Parks Focus Group. Um, I'm almost positive this is a group that I participated in. I think Erica may have participated in it. I cannot remember how many, um, which meetings are what now, unfortunately. I think my mind has been zoomed uh, to oblivion. Um, but um, but there is a uh, there's a piece here that just talks about the city of um, uh, Detroit, which is probably a statement that I I made some variation of, and um, I think just some clarity um, around the wording here is uh, um, around uh, how Detroit intentionally engages with users of all the parks, uh, including those experiencing homelessness. Uh, to ensure that no one is pushed out is probably an important point. And, and probably, you know, this was a Zoom and I don't think it was recorded. So it was probably, you know, based on somebody's notes and I can see why why we ended up with the comment we did. I don't think uh, there was any ill intent or anything, but I think if we can provide some clarity there, a little more formative would probably be good. And um, I think it would reflect um, what we learned in Detroit. Um, so uh, subsection B, uh, page 98, 99 is the next one. Um, so let's see here. So this is uh, around our group, uh, Center of the City Task Force and the Council of the Commons. Uh, and um, there's a, a, a piece here that talks about uh, the, um, just a, uh, just it's actually I think it's uh, language directly from the designation for the Council of Commons. There's I'm pretty sure this language is uh, directly in our, our charge. Um, and uh, so I think the suggestion here, uh, it does include um, this uh, piece around the relationship with PAC, um, which is important. And it's important that it, uh, it, it's sort of called out too. So, um, uh, sort of included a recommendation that the at PAC, the Parks Department staff, and the Council of the Commons are working together to support, um, you know, recommendations for the area uh, designated as the center of the city block, including alt any alterations um, uh, or use uh, pieces. So that that was uh, another piece there um, on page one hundred two. Um, 
there is a, uh, uh, this is a section uh, that, that uh, deals with goals and objectives. Um, and this was put together, uh, I am pretty sure by, um, by uh, city staff looking at a variety of um, uh, plans uh, and uh, that come from a number of city documents. And so uh, we thought a suggestion around uh, park activation, uh, not just urban park, but park activation in general, uh, maintenance and planning, uh, including uh, how to do so through the use of public and private partnerships uh, in order to reduce costs to taxpayers was something uh, that might be a good you know, suggestion uh, to include. Um, uh, there is uh, notes around the, um, the interest in engaging in public-private partnerships or considering the engagement uh, at a few points throughout the document. So I think this goal would just support um, some of that other language that's already there. Um, and uh, then uh, I'll keep going here, page 118. Um, Okay, so uh, this uh, this area is subsection F, neighborhood parks and urban plazas, um, and it talks about uh, some feedback. Um, there was a couple of uh, recommendations that we had here. Um, there was a sentence that says focusing resources on one urban park uh, will just relocate uh, issues to neighboring parks, and uh, I, this is a section that that includes feedback, I believe, from. Uh, some of the um, some of the uh, survey work that's done. So I do think it's it, it's important that uh, that you know really not um, be altered. But we also thought that statement really could be misinterpreted in a negative light. Um, and I you know we have in every conversation we've had uh, that has never been the intent uh, and has been enumerated as um, as uh, uh, it not being the intent of any sort of development or use of spaces, including things like the activation of Liberty Plaza. You know, it's not designed to push people out of the space. And I think staff are doing a really um, yeoman's job to, to prevent that from happening. So that's an important um, uh, piece that we thought would be good just to uh, delete that sentence so that it was not misinterpreted as, uh, as that being uh, part of what the city's intent is in the pros plan. Um, the recommenda second recommendation is uh, just enumerating city advisory bodies, um, such as the DDA, the Council of the Commons, PAC, uh, and city staff in the planning and programming work that is to be done in conjunction with the Downtown Park and Open Space Subcommittee Report. This Downtown Park and Open Space Subcommittee Report is a document that's referenced in the section. So we thought that uh, including sort of the bodies that um, look at this, uh, the, the downtown parks, uh, as a reference uh, to that document and then adding in the Center of the City's Task Force as a secondary document was probably a, um, a good uh, additional suggestion too. Um, and then there are several sections throughout the report. You know, clearly the, the uh, pros plan focuses on, um, uh, you know, planning and, uh, and uh, tax dollar allocation and uh, there are several parts parts that talk about city staff, and uh, there's even a section that uh, indicates that you know sort of a uh, insufficient uh, uh, amount of staff support because there are not enough staff, um, and uh, so maybe some acknowledgement uh, that supports that statement um, that uh, that indicates that you know the Council of Commons is. Uh, recognizes that the city is really tightly staffed and the parks department in particular, and that we support a pros plan that ensures there's sufficient staff and resources to build, activate, and maintain a city park system that enhances and reflects the vibrancy, diversity, and uniqueness of the Ann Arbor community. Um, and so something in there that sort of supports our city staff um, with, um, with the fact that, uh, you know, um, people are, uh, are critical to actually moving these projects forward, uh, regardless of the project, and and we shouldn't expect that um, that this will just happen without resources and staff. So, um, so that is the that is the last page of recommendations. Any questions at all on uh, or concerns around these sections? 
No. Nope. Yeah, I um I just like the uh, the comment about uh, appreciation for staff. Um, now I've lost my train of thought, but it was that last paragraph. Let me kind of read it. Oh yeah, it doesn't uh, comment about the volunteer programs there, but there are at least two that I can think of. And I think they are listed elsewhere in the plan. I'm not sure, maybe it's on the website that I'm thinking, but those, the acknowledgement of the contra contributions of volunteers would be a good thing to have right there with the appreciation for the staff too. We'll add that piece to the volunteer. Uh, community volunteers. Thank you. It takes a village. Yes, it yes. does. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments on this last page of recommendations? Okay. All right. So, um, you know, these are, we are uh, just a couple of days away from the end of the public comment uh, period uh, uh, around uh, submitting public comments to uh, to the uh, uh, Parks Department. And the purpose of the meeting was to try and uh, just put a stamp of approval on some um, public comments to be submitted to Parks uh, as part of that process. Certainly, any member of the community can submit personal remarks, but having something that came from this body was really the reason we were here and why we did this pre-work to, to bring these recommendations together. Um, so uh, kudos to everybody who submitted things, especially Rita, because she really worked hard at trying to do this uh, and uh, be inclusive. And so um, I would just like to see if we could have a motion to support submitting this uh, these recommendations as written here to uh, the Parks Department. I move. Second. Second. All right, moved by Frank, seconded by Alice. Um, all in favor of submitting, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. All right, uh, any opposed? Excellent, okay. So, Wonderful. Wonderful. all right. And I apologize, we're not 30 minutes, but we're, we chugged along pretty good. Uh, so appreciate it. Can out. I just give one remark, Adam, about the, as I understand the parks uh, commission process and that we're not the only one looking at this, but we have a special meeting on January 3rd, uh, hopefully to um, approve the, the sort of final version at, the, at that point. So the sooner that any uh, comments get in uh, the better. And then what I'll do is I'll try to echo or push uh, that the, the, the comments from this body be incorporated or, or considered uh, in these last days as staff is pulling this all together. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, for that. Steve. Hey. Thanks, Steve. All right. Uh, we have uh, public comment, I think, is the next item on the agenda. Heather, could you see if there's any members of the public? Yes. Uh, Daniel, please go ahead. Daniel, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Is it star six? Let's forget. It is star. Yes. It's either star nine or star six. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me there now? Yes. <laughs> so the one point of clarification um, uh, that I guess I would like is that uh, to me, the biggest issue in this entire plan is that the center of the city, aside from the Liberty Plaza, the center of the city is not actually a park. It's not in the park's inventory. So is it the position of the Council of the Commons that that is their intent and that moving forward, they accept that that is their status, that they're not a park? Uh, I'll go Could ahead. Could the commenter identify themselves? I just, I don't know who we're listening to. Yeah. My name's Dan, Dan Rubenstein. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, thanks. Thanks for that. I'll, I'll just answer this real quick. We have not taken a position on that. Um, so uh, it would be up for discussion at some point, but we have not, uh, we've not taken a position uh, around what the designation needs to be. And I think 
just speaking for me personally, that is because we, uh, we are uh, working towards what that plan looks like and uh, the designation would, would come along with that. Now, that's my thought at least, but we have not taken that up. And so the, the answer to their question is we don't, uh, we don't have um, an opinion yet uh, formed. Okay. All right, thank you. Adam, could I also add that there are several properties within the park system that are unique as ours will be unique. And some of them are zoned differently or managed differently. So that's why we're, we're taking a measured approach to that. Thank you, Alice. Uh, Rita, did you have a comment on that? Or yeah, I, I, um, I just wanna say that I would like to know that the pros plan allows us the potential and doesn't put roadblocks in front of what we would like to do in terms of moving forward with making this an active public mm -hmm. space. That's really a, a big um, driving force in terms of, of going through this document in detail to make sure that it opens doors instead of creates roadblocks. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I hope. And I, I think that is related to what Dan said. Thank you. Well, can you can can I still be heard? Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, the the only roadblock I would I would say is that I do think not being um, a park in the pros plan could make certain funding options more difficult in the future. So I do think there are some doors that are, if not closed, made more difficult uh, by the status. Uh, and 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 I and I would just add finally that. Um, for areas, other areas of the city that are not designated um, parks and are not in the parks inventory, let's, and the main one I'm thinking about is the tree line and all of the various parcels that might ultimately be affected by the tree line. Um, they are in the comprehensive plan in a different form. And I think one of the issues is, you know, if, if, if the center of the city, even though it's in the city charter called a park, if it's not in the pros plan, it's not in the parks inventory, and it's not elsewhere in the comprehensive plan, any of the elements, where does that leave it? And especially in terms of applying for significant grant funding from, from grantors, I don't have any particular ones in mind, but just in general. So anyway, that's, that's my comment. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, Heather, any other members of the public? Yes, Jeff. Can go ahead now. Yeah, I'll just be very brief. First, I want to thank you all. This is this is a very difficult task, looking at a very comprehensive pros plan, and for you to come up with a series of recommendations, and at, as this body agreeing to all this is fantastic. I would just add only one thing, and that is, in the process of this, there is a reference to a Park Advisory Commission Downtown Park sub Subcommittee report without any direct link to that. If you have not read it, please, please, if you have not read this, please do read it. It contains a lot of very interesting information and by the way, a lot more support for a park. The, the survey conducted in this, which is in 2013, said that 76% of the people, respondents of over 1600 people were in favor of a downtown park. The other thing I would say is it's one thing to ask people if they were in favor of a downtown park. It's another thing to ask if there are specific things you would like, like a fountain downtown or a seating downtown or a playground downtown. So how you draft the survey question is really important. That's all I need, wanted to say, but thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Any other members of the public? Okay. All right. None with hands raised. Okay, excellent. In that case, uh, I will uh, I will uh, make a PDF of this document and send it to Heather, uh, and she can uh, include it in the minutes. And uh, also, we'll submit it to uh, the Parks Department. And Stephen, appreciate any of your lobbying efforts uh, in the process. And um, with that, we will uh, ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Have a wonderful uh, afternoon. Happy holidays. Enjoy your time off, and we'll see you uh, next month. Thanks again Thank for you all. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.